Especially today, that means I feel like I'm taking a trip. <laughs> we uh, have a, a meal after uh, worship today, the uh, soon after Sunday school. Uh, so you have to stay for Sunday school before you can eat. Uh, then we'll have a board meeting following that. Uh, a lot of things to discuss about keeping, getting up to date on the, especially the camp meeting and some other things. But we have some work to do today, this time, this hour. Now let us rise as we join in our call to worship. God is our rock of refuge, a strong fortress. Christ leads us and guides us each day. We have tasted the goodness of God. We have known the presence of Christ. God shows us the one. 
and let us set, lay our troubles at Christ's feet. Let us enter the sanctuary God prepares for us. We have come to find the way, to truth, and the life. We are here to ask and to receive and to serve. Let's join together in an opening prayer. O oh God, God and heaven and earth, we are your people, people, sisters and brothers of your chosen one. Let us this day be built into a spiritual house, a community of your faithful people. Incline your ear to us and rescue us from ourselves. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our first hymn is number 73, O Worship the King. joys and concerns with one another and do we lift them up to God as we speak them in the sanctuary. But do we have something we want to share today? Thankful for the rain. Not when you're driving in it. <laughs> <laughs> well we will we will pray that God accommodates us and rains while we're in here and then stop. <laughs> We're grateful for God's uh, God's abundant care of nature. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah, our prayers. Nick, prayers for my neighbor Dennis Kelly. His you know his wife passed away back in January. Well, he is going to have to have radiation for cancer in his neck now, roundly. So that's five weeks of treatment. So, and okay. I'm his driver. <laughs> well, yeah. we're, we're right here. <laughs> I know that, the, that you've been a help to each other quite often. Yes. So uh, we'll pray for your name. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. 
Fritz Berg Lewis and Marilyn Russell from Leno. She's in the hospital in Round Rock and he failed yesterday and uh, her both take a cup so he's gonna have to have some surgery this week. Mm -hmm. And my daughter Penny is the caretaker of it. So we leave the, the Russell family needs to take it. All right, for the Russell family. <coughs> Lord in your mercy. In your prayers. prayers. Pete Andrews family. Pete Andrews family passed away this past week. Lord in your mercy. In your prayers. Tell the Murphy is coming up this week. Oh. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. He quit having <laughs> yeah. um, There's going to be the visitation for Pete is on Friday from 6 to 8. And then his funeral is Saturday at the First Street Church of Christ in Lampasas at 2 on Saturday. And then he'll be buried at the Clark Campbell Cemetery out there. And then there will be a bereavement dinner to follow at the schoolhouse. So... Why should bring some food? <laughs> <laughs> we can yes. bring food all the time. <laughs> we, 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 we do it rally around. Lord, in your mercy. In yeah. our prayers. Um, yesterday, um, I attended the one of the first for the disaffiliation votes, and that was a that was a hard vote to, to do. Um, Bishop Schnazy. Did a fabulous job. Um, Thirty-three churches so far have disaffiliated at, at our conference, and um, it was a, it was a sad day. But just blessings upon those who feel the need to uh, disaffiliate. Yes, at a meeting yesterday at the January conference, call session so that we could take care of that before annual conference in June. Um, it is sad, but it's, it's a, at this present time, it's less than ten percent of the churches. He, he Pastor Schnazy, Bishop Schnazy, did say that um, an hour before annual conference begins, there will be another vote because there's another twenty-five to thirty churches that will meet the requirements for this disaffiliation. Right. It's a it's a sad day in the Methodist Church, I think. When we, Feel like we disagree so much that we have to separate ways. It's a, as I've said before, it's not like getting a divorce. It's like divorcing your parents, divorcing the, the body that gave birth to you. But because of that, we still need God's mercy. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Any other? We need to just pray for some sense of civility in our country. It's going to hit, not, I mean, so much closer. It will. It just gets closer and closer, and it doesn't make the news unless you kill 9, 10, 20. It's awful. we got to do something. No civility in the left. Yes, sir. I think that in part... Uh, that's because we've lost our sense of community. Mm -hmm. We uh, felt like we knew our neighbors and we helped, we were responsible to them and they were responsible to us. We didn't do such things. But there is a, a lot of violence, a lot of strife in the country right now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And continue. Pray for Pam and Lori Henniger and their terrible situation. For the Henniger, for Pam and Lori. Lori and Pam, yeah. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Let's take a moment and put ourselves into the presence of God. Lord, Walk with us. Walk with us when the way is difficult 
and we need to be reassured. Walk with us when the way is easy, and we wander away in the wrong direction. <clears throat> Pull us back to the path when we're not paying attention. Walk with us when the way takes us to unknown places. We want to sit down for a moment and catch our breath. We want to sing together and pray together. We want to listen to your words spoken and in the silence kept. We want to feel your presence in and around us. Then we'll have the strength to go forward. Give us work to do, helpful work, loving work, holy work. Give us a purpose that is greater than our own vision and usual routine. And let us see the morning. Let us see it, our purpose every morning as we get out of bed. And let us see what we've accomplished each night as we go back to bed. We pray in Jesus' name and in with Jesus' words when we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I, uh, I would say the one thing that uh, Oftentimes I pull the last bulletin in to, to redo it for this bulletin, and I always seem to forget the communion ritual. <laughs> so that's going to be after the offering. Uh, let's let's hear uh, from uh, Brother Peter. Our scripture reading this morning is First Peter. Chapter 2, verses 2 through 10. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourself be built into a spiritual house to be holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God, through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture, See, I am laying a Zion, in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word, and they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. In our responsive reading is Psalm 31 on page 764 in our hymnal. We'll use a different response for the one in the book, and the words are just the very last line of the song. Save me through your steadfast love. And it goes like this. Save me from your steadfast love. Everybody now. From the bridge. In you, O Lord, I seek refuge. 
Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me. And come your ear to me. Rescue me speedily. Be a rock of refuge for me. A strong fortress to save me. You are indeed my rock and my fortress. For your name's sake, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net which is sitting for me. For you are my refuge. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. I have been able to pay the Lord to many miles, but I trust in the Lord. I will rejoice and be glad in your steadfast love, because you have seen my affliction and you have taken heed of my adversities. You have not delivered me into the hand of the enemy. You have set my feet in a wrong place. Save me through your steadfast love. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am in distress. My eyes wasted from grief, my soul and body also. For my life is sin with sorrow, and my years with sighing. My strength fails because of my misery, and my bones waste away. I am the scorn of all my adversaries, a horror to my neighbors, an object of dread to my acquaintances. Those who see me in the street flee from me. I have passed out of mind on that one who is there. I have become like a broken vessel. terror all around, as they scheme together against me, as they plot to take my life. But I trust in you, O Lord. I say, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Deliver me, deliver me from the hand of my enemies and persecutors. Let your face shine on your servant. Save me through your steadfast love. Save me Great thou art, number 
speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask me my name so that the Father will be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. At the end of uh, each week, I pack up some stuff and go to Liberty Hill to spend some time with my wife and my family. Now, it's not a very long trip, it's just an hour, but I always seem to forget something. I leave my tablet, I leave my book, I leave the mail, I leave something that I've got to miss. So I have to try harder and look harder before I leave the house each day, each time. Now, you have to do the same thing. You travel, even if it's short trips. Uh, if you live in Bend, you have to travel to get groceries. Yep. You have to travel to go to the doctor. But you may have a bigger trips that you have. You may go see family. You may go to places that are familiar to you, uh, that you want to see again. You may see some old friends. Uh, you may even want to go on a new adventure. If you do, you have to plan. You may have to plan your route to somewhere unfamiliar. You have to decide what you're going to take and what you're not going to take because you can't take everything. But you have to anticipate what you're going to need. You have to make plans for back home. 
you have to have somebody water your plants and feed your animals. You have to make plants. It's easier to stay home. Everything's right there. It's familiar. It's easy. But there's something about the human spirit that wants to get up and go sometimes. We want to see something new. We want to do something different. It's like in our DNA. I want to suggest to you that all of life is a journey. That the whole thing from beginning to end is a trip, a journey with each other. You start out in a comfortable womb and then suddenly you're thrust out into the world in a strange lighted environment with a bunch of strangers. It's no wonder we cry. And then we spend the next 20 years changing our our growth, our, 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 our from childhood to adulthood, uh, with, with this constant change. And along the way, we have to decide what's important. We have to decide what we really need and what we don't need. And we spend a lot of years trying to acquire the things that we think we need. And then the later years, we spend trying to get rid of that same stuff. We have to figure out in a larger society where we fit. We have to figure out what's right, what's wrong. That there are conflicting pulls on us and we have to decide what our priorities are so that we can do one thing and give up another. And then eventually we want to begin to wonder what's next. I think that's the reason why Jesus is talking to the disciples. This is the farewell gospel, farewell discourse. And it takes four chapters of the book of John. That's a lot of talking. But Jesus wants to make sure that they get it right. He wants to make sure that when he's gone, because next day is going to be his crucifixion, he wants to make sure they get it and remember what's important and, and let go of the things that are not so that they can move forward with the mission that he has set before them. He wants them to get it right. So basically, for the, strat, for the part we have today, uh, this, is, this is the basic conversation. I'm going away. Where are you going? <clears throat> well, you don't know the place. And you can't go anywhere. But it's okay. It's not forever. That's what we say to people at funerals. Because they've lost somebody important to them. We say, they went away. You can't know the place. You can't go. But it's okay. It's not forever. So the disciples then are confused. You're going somewhere and you're not going to take us? Show us the way so we can follow. They're speaking of physical existence naturally. And in John's gospel, they, Jesus talks at a different level than they are. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Now I know that you will probably remember last year's sermon on this scripture. And I could probably call on you and you could tell me what the meaning of the, the, the way, the truth, and the life is. Uh, but I, 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 I'll just remind you. The way is not a destination. It is a, it is a way of going. Jesus didn't say, I am the destination. He said, I am the way. The way when you're traveling changes every morning when you get up. It's a new day. It's a new beginning. It's a, it's a new road ahead of you. So this is an adventure. Go the way is to go with Jesus down life. 
the truth. The truth is not a set of beliefs, it's not an ideology, it's not a morality, it's not a set of rules, it's a person. Jesus. If you want to see the truth, look at Jesus. If you want to see how God made the world, look at Jesus. If you think you want to see what life is like, look at Jesus. He is the truth. He is the one. To the truth. And then life is ever changing. Life is something when it begins life, it continues to grow and changes. Only the inner, like the rocks, which we have a few of those around here, uh, they don't grow. And they don't move unless something acts upon them. Life changes, life grows, life is abundant. But what I want to emphasize today is the idea that we are on a journey that we are traveling with Jesus and that Jesus is the way. Sometimes we get fooled because we think life is so routine that nothing ever changes. But I want to suggest to you that every morning when you get up, life is different. The ingredients are different. You're different. The, the things that are going to happen are different. Life is an adventure. Life is a journey. And sometimes we get fooled by the routine to think that it will never change. It is always changing. And the dying question is, are we going to follow Jesus on the way? Or are we going to get uh, lazy and not, not have the energy to get up and, and go in the morning? Are we going to have, get the sidetracked by some priority that's not really important? Are we going to spend our energy on something that really doesn't matter? Are we going to wander away when we're not paying attention. We have a path to be traveled. It's a journey and it's best journey with Jesus who is the way and the truth and life. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. As we hear God's word and feel God's presence, we affirm our faith. Let's give words to that affirmation with number 881 in the back of the hymnal. And stand so we show the world what we stand for. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sat at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of body, and the life of Christ. Amen. continue our worship. Yeah. Heavenly Father, we travel with you on the journey. May we join with other folks who are traveling in the same direction so that we can be stronger and better together. Part of that is giving of our resources, our time, and our energy our attention. May this offering be a step forward in that direction. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
page uh, 12 in the front of your Bible, a service of word and table. Actually, page. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sins and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Join with me. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the need. Forgive us, we pray. Free us from joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Take a moment and take your individual petitions to God. The good news Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Join with me in the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks in grace. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by the water and the spirit. On the night which gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave it to his disciples, and broke the bread, and gave him to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these mighty acts of Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as he proclaimed the mystery of faith. Christ is God. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on those gathered here in these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that they that we may be the body for the for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. Until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast in his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours. Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. We take the bread just like Jesus took it, and we break it so that we can all participate in it. And also to remember his brokenness for our sake. We lift up the cup and ask God's blessing upon it to become for us a source of healing and wholeness, a source of forgiveness, a cup of life.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we journey with Jesus. He travels with us and feeds us at this holy table. He is also the host that receives us and embraces us into our holy home. May we taste the way and taste the kingdom as we eat together. Amen. And those assisting, please come. Tables prepared. We need food for the journey. Please come.
closing him is joyful, joyful. We adore thee, number 89. Christ's representatives, we are the church, the body of Christ on earth. Together we can make a difference. God is at work in us to heal the world. Amen. Let's sing our blessing. Serve the Lord.